everybody so I have got a tripod stand so I don't have to hold the camera with both my hands so today's lesson is about projectile motion so this is totally new you may have heard the word projectile before and I'll just um, explain the difference between what's a projectile and what's not a projectile now projectile is anything that moves freely through the air without its own source of power so if I throw something up and catch it that is a projectile because it didn't have its own motor so a helicopter or an aircraft is not a projectile even though it's going through the air because it has its own source of power okay if you throw a ball up into the air or drop something from a height all those are called projectiles and the only force if we include air exclude air resistance the only force that acts on a projectile is the force of gravity okay now there are some words that are used in with projectiles so there are two types of projectile motions and one of them is when you throw something from a height that's the way it's going to land okay now so the path that is taken by a projectile is called its trajectory so trajectory is the path that is taken by a projectile this is only really half a projectile, okay? But if you kick a soccer ball from the ground and it lands on the ground, its trajectory is going to be that of a parabola. So we actually solve two sorts of questions under projectile motion. One is the half projectile, which we'll be looking at today, and the other one is the whole way through. Now, some of the other things that is important is um, that we need to know is that the distance a projectile travels horizontally along the ground so it kick a soccer ball from there it goes up in the air and lands at the other end this distance is called the range the horizontal distance okay now if i divide this into two this is your half projectile now that's really important because when a projectile moves through the air it's actually doing two things it's like your plane taking off it's actually going forwards and upwards for half the flight and the other half it's still going forwards but now it's falling downwards now the reason why the height changes it goes up and comes down is because of the force of gravity and this force of gravity acts vertically down so at any instant of time the force that's acting on a projectile that is moving all the time the size of this force is the same and the size of the force is the force of gravity and that acts vertically down so because it is accelerated motion in the vertical direction we have to use kinematic equations to solve anything to do with the vertical motion of a projectile there's also one other type of motion for the projectile. It also has constant horizontal velocity. So the speed horizontally doesn't change. That stays the same the whole time. However, the speed vertically changes. So if I just draw another diagram here to tell you about the speeds of a projectile. And let's say you kick a ball and these are its positions let's look at the horizontal speed the horizontal speed stays the same the whole time because it's going forwards and for the horizontal speed the only equation we use for constant velocity is v equals distance over time so this is what we use for the horizontal quantity speed is distance over time However, if I look at the vertical velocity, what does that look like? The instant you throw, the instant it leaves your hand, velocity is a maximum. And because gravity is pulling it down, the size of that velocity decreases and your vertical velocity becomes zero at the top. It still has horizontal velocity. And then it starts to go down. And then as it goes down, its speed keeps increasing so when it lands on the ground, the speeds are maximum, but in the downward direction. So the second diagram here is to do with the velocity of a projectile. Okay, so the 
The other thing that's really important is because it's a parabola and it is symmetrical, the time taken to go from the bottom to maximum height is the same as the time it will take to go from the top to the other end. Okay, so when we have to find the time that the projectile takes to go the whole distance, we actually divide that into two halves. We always find the time taken to reach maximum height. And if you multiply that by two, you can find the total time of flight. For example, if it takes five seconds to re go from the bottom to the top, then the whole journey is going to take 10 seconds. Okay, so that's to do with projectile motion. And the first set of problems that we do is about throwing something from a height. So we're only looking at one half. And what we need to remember is that the horizontal velocity is some constant the whole time, but the vertical velocity is zero. So it's got two sorts of velocities. So if you find the time it takes to fall from the top to the bottom, it's also the same as the time it takes to go forwards okay so that's all for an introductory lesson on projectile motion i hope that made sense and bye for now